Welcome to this edition of Open Source Pro Tips by Sangoma. I'm your host, Robert Keller. This topic, 911 services. I'm just going to show the mechanics of setting up one extension. You can find a lot of details about the new requirements and how to set this up in our wiki. I'm going to touch on outbound routes, E911 notifications, emergency CIDs, and hot desk emergency CIDs. We'll start with the outbound route. We want it to be first in the order of outbound routes and set as emergency. The dial patterns are going to be 911-933. Uh, I like to put a prefix of 1, 9, and 91 in front of 911 additionally in case someone is panicking. Next up, we'll set a paging call to notify others when 911 is dialed. Uh, to do this, go in and add a paging group, give it some number. A description. Set up the extensions for the group and so on as you normally would. Submit. And then you want to go back to your emergency route in and outbound routes. And in additional settings, select for notifications that page group you just made and submit. And apply. It's worth noting that you can use the 933 uh, test 911 to test this paging group as well. Next, we'll go to the mechanism to ensure the correct caller ID is set for E911 calls. That's simply the emergency CID field in each extension. It works in conjunction with the emergency route as long as it's set as the emergency route. Last but not least, I'm going to run through the hot desk emergency calling setup through Endpoint Manager. I just have one demo phone, but I'm going to start um, by going into extension mapping, grabbing the MAC address for that phone, going to hot desk emergency CIDs, and creating a new mapping. Give it a sensible name. Put in the emergency CID I want. And add one or more MAC addresses for that location. Additionally, we're going to want to check some of the extension defaults. Um, so go into the extension. And then advanced setting. And we're going to be concerned about the DTMF signaling. Uh, we want to see RFC 4733, qualify frequency 60, RTP symmetric, yes. Rewrite contact, set to yes, and force our port, set to yes. And now I'm going to show you a quick example of that with the phone logged in, testing with 933 to make sure it's the right ID is used. You have reached the 911 address verification service. You are calling from 1360788. Well, it's a little tough to see what's going on. This is the same action in the CLI. Um, Without scrolling back, it's hard to tell what happened, but essentially the call was made, it's doing the test, and then it's also paging uh, the E911 notify page group. Next, I'm going to take with the same phone and log out in a, as in a hot desking situation, and then do the same test. You have reached the 911 address verification service. You are calling from 1360788451. 
In the CLI, this looks a little different. We can see where the phone is logged out and is unreachable. And then it registers as an emergency endpoint. And then I'll go and test the call. Basically, it looks the same as the other call at this point, except for the internal CID is a little bit different. But the outbound caller ID is the same, and it is working. Please bear in mind that it's absolutely imperative that you work with your provider and ensure that all E91 records of concern are accurate and up to date. Thank you for watching this open source pro tip by Sangoma.